Welcome. Um, I have been gone. If you've been following me on social media, I've been gone to two back to back events. Um, it was amazing. My brain is so full and I'm so excited to be able to bring back a bunch of things and share with the foot traffic community. But what I will say, this just prompted even more, you know, things that I saw. Okay. So, uh, first of all, I'm at a conference, I'm sitting at a round table, right? And this woman next to me, she's on her, I mean, on her phone consistently doing stuff, whatever, puts it down, dings back. She picks it up. She's responding. How many of you have done this? Right. And then she sits down. She, she left to go take a phone call, comes back, sits down. And she kind of just is like, oh, I'm always working. Okay. So of course, you know, my type A coaching. I'm like, how do I help? Right. How do I do this? But here's the deal everybody was texting everybody was leaving the room everybody was like outside working right and this happens a lot at conferences okay it is so common to see it to see people typing on their computer as fast as possible you can tell they're not listening to the presenter they're working right so what happens is it becomes validation to everybody else that this is normal this is okay right this is expected and i want you to understand that just because it is pretty normal and everybody is doing it doesn't mean it needs to be your normal, okay? Please hear me when I say that. Now, another thing that I really want you to hear me say is I am not shaming this person or anybody else that does this because that used to be me. I fully understand and can grasp the whole idea of what is going on because I was that person. If you've been following me for a while, you've heard me share the wedding dress story. I'll quickly share it here because it just like sums up. Like if you're working on your wedding day, you're working on every day, right? I literally took a phone call in my wedding dress. I didn't walk down the aisle yet. I was getting ready, took a phone call and was literally changing out somebody's credit card when my clients had no idea that I was a crazy bride in her wedding dress, but it was rock bottom for me. I bring up that story often because I will never get that out of my head. <laughs> I will never forget how much this business was running me. Okay. Um, at another, we, I went to two back-to-back -back events and this person says to me, Oh, what do you do? Like, filming in more, right? A small talk like normal. And I brought up, I'm like, well, I actually own two performing arts academies in Milwaukee. And, um, you know, I got out of them about nine years ago, but I still run them. Uh, I still own and operate them, but I work in them about an hour a week. And I, now I have this other business called foot traffic that I get to love and like, just have like my passion be surrounded with. Right. And they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like interrupts me like, whoa, whoa, whoa. So wait a minute the business actually runs itself. And I was like, well, the team runs the business and the team has systems that we put in place. And yes, I still am there. I'm the visionary. I'm still leading uh, one hour a week. I meet with the general manager and the marketing manager. But yeah, like but other than that, I said, and obviously like COVID, I had to jump in, but we just didn't have a system for COVID, right? We've never been through a pandemic before. But other than that, I'm like, yeah, it, it runs itself, right? And this person couldn't get over the fact that that could even be possible, right? That that could even be true. Now, I will tell you, I have been in both shoes of this is a nightmare. The business needs me. If I don't answer this phone, they're going to call my competitor and I'm not going to get this sale. I've been there. How many of you are there? How many of you feel like you are just doing all the things? Okay. Now I will tell you, I was like that when I had a handful of team members, just a handful. And I had a few hundred customers, right? The, the studio phone was transferred to me when I wasn't there. And everybody that worked in the building was texting me, right? That was me. I was there. I will tell you now I have in the studios over 50 employees and in foot traffic, I think we have about 15 of us. Okay. I obviously have more customers than I've ever had. And I will tell you, I was just gone for a week and a half. And I was never interrupted or text message or somebody saying, we've got to speak. It's urgent. It can't wait for you. Okay. That is a work in progress. And that is what I want to teach you all week is how to have that be your reality. Okay. So if you're just joining, please say hello in the chat. So I know you're watching or type in replay. If you're watching the replay, um, here's what I will tell you. A team building a team is not a nightmare. It's not a headache. It's not a bad thing. The only way those are true is if you don't know how to hire, you don't know how to set boundaries, you don't know how to lead.
okay? That's not easy to hear, right? But I have to share it. It's not the team, right? Or it's not the team you used to be on or what you used to work for. No, 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 okay? The problem comes back to us. Now, it could be that you've got a bad apple or two or three on your team, but what you have to understand is you put them there or you hired the person who put them there, right? It comes back to you. Now, the good news is if the problem is you, then we can fix it. Like that's actually amazing news because if the problem really was external, there might not be much we can do, but you actually have control over this problem, okay? Now, right now, I assume people in here watching, you are probably the CEO of your business. Can you actually tell me in the comments right now what position you hold? Are you the CEO, okay? Now, um, we call ourselves the CEO, right? But a lot of people that will say or identify as a CEO, like it really feels like you're the chief everything officer, right? Now, if you don't want employees or you don't want contractors, right, then that means you are going to hold dozens of positions in your organization, okay? If you don't want employees or contractors, you're going to be the CEO, you're going to be the COO, the CMO, the CFO, and a bazillion other things, okay? That sounds miserable to me. That like It sounds like a nightmare, a headache, all the things people say are horrible about teams. I'm like, that's what it sounds like to me without a team, okay? Now, the worst part is your business cannot afford to pay you to be all of those things, okay? Let's be honest here. You're ignoring half of the positions, if not more, that you should actually be doing or that your business needs. Am I right? Okay, now, I just wanna glance and make sure I have the right microphone on. I don't know if I can do this while I'm on. I really hope the right mic. Do you feel like you can hear this? Like, like I'm hitting the right mic or am I talking to my computer? That would be amazing. Okay, so fill me in. Here's what I wanna say. Freedom isn't a small team, okay? Freedom, or I should say freedom isn't zero team or a small team. Freedom is doing only the stuff you wanna do, the stuff that lights you up, the stuff that falls in line with your zone of genius while the team is running the business the way you want it to be run, in the way that is in alignment with your, ah, oh, I'm talking to my computer, no. Um, that really bums me out. I love how I have this really nice microphone and I'm talking into the computer. Okay, no worries. Okay, you can hear me okay though? I hope so. Okay, so with that said, I just said running in alignment with your company values, right? Like that is freedom, okay? That is freedom. And I know I'm, I'm like rewiring some thoughts and ideas you have in your head right now, okay? But I want you to stick with me because if you keep doing whatever it is you're doing, how you're running your business, unfortunately, you are never gonna not be stressed, okay? You are gonna be constantly in like doing all the things and that is not fun. And in fact, it can't be sustained, right? You will not want to be doing whatever it is you're doing in your business, making not enough income because let's be honest, most CEOs in small businesses are underpaid, right? And now you're overworked. Okay, now let me ask you this. If you have, let's say this, what if a big team, not even a big team, because you can be small and mighty, but what if a team was well-oiled, it meant way less stress on your end, the business could run without you, you could slow down in summer, you could take a six-week vacation, like you could do whatever you wanted and it would run without you, how many of you would say yes to that? How many of you would be in, okay? Now I know I'm gonna get yeses. I'm gonna get people to say, yeah, that sounds amazing, if only that could be true, right? But the thing is, that can be true. And it is true for a lot of small business owners, okay? Now, I say a lot of small business owners, but let's be honest, it is, it's true for this much, like a very small percentage of a large percentage of small business owners, right? So what I want you to understand is, if you just experienced what I experienced being gone for the last week and a half, missing work and having the team have a record week last week, like they killed it, 
killed it. Some of you might've seen it on my Instagram stories. It was one of the best weeks we've had in a long time. I would bet you would sign up for that. I bet you'd be excited to do that, right? Now it all starts, <clears throat> it all starts with picking the right people, right? <clears throat> okay, so that's what we're gonna talk about. It starts with the right people. So I'm gonna share with you my five-step framework that will help you weed out those bad apples and bring you people that you can add to your dream team. Sound good? Who's ready? Say me in the chat. Okay, so step number one, this is a five-step framework. Step number one is getting clear and confident. Getting clear and confident, okay? Sorry, I'm doing one more thing to see if I can fix this without messing this up. Nope, I'm gonna mess it up. Okay, no worries, we're gonna keep going. So clear and confident, know what you need and what you want. What tasks, projects, or roles do you need right now? This is a big one. What will they do every day? And what will they do long-term? What does winning look like for this role? Okay. How many of you know your next hire? How many of you are, like say it in the chat, how many of you know who you're hiring next? Say yes or no in the chat, okay? Now, think how easy this would be to figure out your next hire if you just started to brain dump all the things you wanted to remove off your plate or remove off of somebody else's plate. So sometimes I will say to somebody, because I'll, I always ask myself, am I maxed out? How am I feeling? And then I'll look at somebody who's just killing it in the business and I'll say, is she maxed out or is he maxed out? What could I take off their plate that really anybody could do? They're just, they've got it and they're doing it. But what if I could remove some of those things off their plate and hire somebody else so they could stay in their zone of genius, right? You start to strip things away. And if you made that person start brain dumping all the things that they're doing that anybody could do, the tedious, the admin type stuff, right? That all of a sudden helps you figure out who is the next person on your team. Clarity brings confidence, okay? Clarity brings confidence. The reason people are like, oh, I don't even know who I would hire. I don't even know what they would do. I don't even know if I would have time to train them, right? Please know that the more crystal clear you get on what this person would do, what their role would look like, the more confident you will be in bringing them on and having them set up for success. When people are just like, I don't know what I need, but I need somebody, and they're just getting bodies like in the business, that is usually when I see a lot of errors happening because they don't have a clear picture. They're like, wait, you mean I can't just hire you and you're just gonna come in and fix them and solve my problem? No, you don't get to hire somebody for $15 an hour and then think they're gonna come in and tell you what to do. Like that's not what you've hired them for, right? So number one, is really getting clear and confident on what it, who you need and what it is they're gonna do, okay? Number two is finding the cream of the crop, okay? Here is where, this is one of my favorite things, so listen up. We get our candidates to raise their hands. We get them to self-select and weed people out, okay? Now what's here is what's cool is we don't weed them out, they weed themselves out. So if you're like, I'm so busy, I don't even know how to do this, great. The busier you are, the more this strategy works so well because it literally has them doing the work. So if you've ever posted on Craigslist or Indeed or any one of those other like job posting sites, how many of you have done that? Say me in the chat. You might have posted a job posting and, and you hit submit and all of a sudden you immediately, like literally you hit a button and immediately you have these resumes and you're like, how did they already see my posting and now they've applied? Okay, well here's the problem. There are people that will say, if a social media manager position in my area is available, auto submit my resume. That is not a good thing. If any of you are like, oh, that's amazing. That's not a good thing. Here's why. People that have never seen your job posting, they have no idea what your business is or what the job is going to entail, have auto submitted their resume. You don't want people that don't want this position, okay? So you've gotta be very, very careful when you have those sites that are doing that. Okay, now, how do we get past this, okay? So here is one of my favorite strategies that we use constantly, okay? Is we get them here to raise their hand to actually have to say, yes, I want this job, not automatically send it over, okay? We don't want those people. So one thing that we do is we have an auto reply email address, okay? So this is a separate email account 
It is not monitored, it is not checked. And when they submit their resume, they will get an, just like they auto messaged me, I auto message them right back. And I'm like, hey, thanks for your interest in working at foot traffic. Here's what the position is, or here, right? Maybe I'll have another sentence or two. If you're still interested, please fill out this form below. Without filling out this form, we will not continue inter like continue down the interview process with you, okay? So what does it do? Well, first of all, people are lazy, right? Lots of people, especially in today's market, are lazy. So they won't fill it out. They're like, oh, I have to do work? I'll just wait for the other 20 job postings I automatically submitted and see who I get picked from, okay? So the lazy people say, no thanks, not interested. And I'm saying, thank you for not being interested because if you can't fill out a simple Google form, you do not have a place in our business, okay? So that Google form, I have seen people say that one tip alone has saved them so much time and energy and the best part, so we don't even look at resumes. When people submit resumes, we don't look at them because the autoresponder then shoots that back and they fill out that form. I'm looking at the form, right? I'm looking at the form to decide, do I want them to move forward or not? I, it's like crazy, like they say like 80% of people, I wish I had like a real statistic, but it's like 80% of people lie on a resume or indulge on a resume. Why would I ever wanna look at a resume that was auto submitted and decide if I wanna hire this person or not? We don't even look at them, okay? Now, we'll look at them later on when there's a couple to look at, but we don't look at them in the beginning, okay? So here is my, my big thing when it comes to like getting the cream of the crop, right? You get them to raise their hand. You get them to opt out, right? So anything you can do that makes people do something, right? You might be able to say, uh, please submit a two minute, up to two minutes of a video, nothing fancy can be on your iPhone, of why you felt this job was a good fit for you, okay? By making somebody do something, most people will say, no thanks, okay? Now, you might think, but I don't want all these people to like leave. I, I need to find somebody. The people that do it, there'll be a very small portion of people that fill through Google form, that fill out, that do the video, right? Do whatever, small portion, but here's the best part. They're the people you actually want. They're the people that go above and beyond. And in both of my companies, we are looking for people that over deliver. It's one of our company values, right? We wanna make sure that we are going above and beyond. We have high standards here. And if you can't go above and beyond, you're not a good fit for us, okay? So by giving them something to do, this will start to slowly back them away. Now, another thing we used to do, this was before video, we would do video a lot, but for some of you, you might feel like video is a little too intense for your position. We would set up a Google Voice phone number, okay? Again, this is all free. And we would say, please call and leave a message with your, and we would say like your name, your email, and your top three reasons why you decided this job would be a good fit for you, okay? So when they would call and leave us a message, even just hearing them on the phone, and, and now here's the thing, if I'm hiring somebody that's going to be on the phone with somebody, I want to hear their voice. Do they sound welcoming and warm and friendly? Do they sound, right? Like, are they like abrupt and short and not a good fit? So there's other things that we like to see when we get to see those videos or listen to voice messages, okay? Now what's cool is we would get like 20 great people that we'd be looking at and that's a lot to weed through. And then we'd say, and leave a voice message or do a video. And we go from like 20 to seven, but those seven would all be good, okay? So this will help you start to really weed through your current people. Okay, how is it sounding so far? How are we doing? Okay, number three, cautious, okay? Slow and steady wins the race. Now we are gonna talk about, you know, in this market, you can't be too slow and steady, right? So I'm gonna talk about this in a minute. Now, first of all, you want multiple rounds even if it's the same questions, okay? In fact, some of them are the same on purpose because I wanna see who's consistent. It is hard to keep up with lies. When you're inauthentic, inconsistent, you're kinda like giving a little bit, sugarcoating things a little bit. When I ask you over and over and over, it will be hard for you to remember lies. So that means when I ask more and more, I'm getting, I'm taking notes, right? I'm starting to see, okay, this is consistent. Or I'm starting to see, hmm, interesting. This is what they said last time. And now I'm seeing this. And now I realize I don't have somebody out of integrity 
that's our number one core value is being an in integrity, right? These are things I'm looking for. Okay. So multiple rounds. Now, next, do not do those multiple rounds with just you. Or even like, let's say you have a manager that does this. Don't allow just that one manager to be alone. Always have a second opinion. Okay. Now, if, if it really is just you and you're like, I don't even know who I really would ask, ask your spouse, your sister, your friend, I don't care. They don't even know, need to know that they're not in the business. Okay. When somebody's coming to interview for you, they're so nervous and I can be like, who's that? <laughs> right. If you were like, oh, hi there. Thanks so much for interviewing. Uh, this is Kara. She's going to be joining us today. They're going to go, hi, Kara. And they're going to move on. You don't need to explain who they are, but you want somebody there because you want to know, here's my thought. What are you thinking? Did I miss something? Am I like so in love with this candidate? Cause sometimes we are, or we're so desperate. We're like, let's just take them. They've got a pulse. Let's go. Right. The second person can be like, listen, this is not as good as you're thinking. They said this, this was not a good answer. Right? So you really want to make sure that a second opinion is there to guide you. All right. When we are desperate, we make desperate decisions. Okay. Bad hires are worse than not hiring at all. I don't care how overworked you are. A bad hire can make more work for you because you're fixing mistakes. Okay. Now, like I said, during this time, as we're recording this, the market, there are more, can't we, how do I say this? There are more candidates than there are jobs which means it is a candidate's market. They can basically, like they can go so fast through these because there's just so many options for them. We're all so desperate, some of us, right? So we've gotta make sure that we move faster, but that doesn't mean you skip rounds. It just means you do the rounds faster. So like, let's say round one is week one and you usually wait till week two for the next round. And then week three, you might go round one is today and tomorrow we are moving forward with round two. So this is what I'm saying. You've got to pick up the pace or what's going to happen is, and I've heard this from clients is people will say, I went to go offer her the job and she already took a different job. I already pitched him on this and he told me he's no longer interested. Be very, very careful. Okay. All right. Number four. Okay. Collaborate. So here's what I mean by that. This is a big one for us too. Okay. I am giving you so much stuff in here that is actionable, tactical. You can implement this immediately. Okay. Number four is really collaborating with a sample project. Okay. Hire them for a small project, pay them for it. Okay. And here's what I will say. Usually this might be like a 10 hour project, five hour project, right? What's even great is this is another weeding out process is I'm shocked how many people will say, Oh, I have a full-time job. Like I'm not going to be able to pick up an extra five hours or 10 hours. Like that's not possible. Like I would have to put my two week notice in and I couldn't start till whenever. Okay. Now listen, if I'm asking for five hours of your time or 10 hours of your time, that's only one hour a weekday, right? Or you could do it all on Saturday. If you can't give me five hours because you're at full time and you're done after full time, that's not good because here's why. There are times in both of my businesses when it gets a little crazy. We're either in a launch in foot traffic or the recital week's happening in our studios and all hands on deck. And if you already are like, oh no, I'm not able to work more than 40 hours, that's not gonna be a good fit for our business when we have peak times that we are a little bit busier than normal, okay? So even that is a great way for me to see they're not gonna be able to handle it, okay? Uh, we really had somebody in one of our interviews, the reason she was interviewing was because she's like, yeah, they're requiring us to step up and work a little bit more right now. And I just don't want to work anymore. And we're like, and this is not a good fit for you, right? Like we need to hear this stuff. So we will do a paid sample project. Now, if I love my top two candidates, like I just cannot pick, I will give both of them a small paid project and I will let them both work on it to compare which project is better. This step right here will show you your person. What's nice is you're getting them to talk to their direct report, whether that's a manager or it's you, you're actually getting to see what it's like to work with them. Are they resourceful? Are they like things that are in your company values? What makes sense to you? Are they like, is this a person you want to work with? Right? Or are you already having trouble in the paid trial? If you're having trouble, then trust me, it's not getting better from here. Okay. So collaboration 
is probably one of the biggest, best signs of will this person be a good fit for our company culture or not, okay? All right, number five, creation. So the first 90 days is the absolute most crucial time, and I still consider this part of the hiring process, okay? We hire somebody with a 90-day probation, okay? So that means it might not move further than 90 days. So it's taking the sample project of just like five or 10 hours and now saying, great, here's what we wanna see. The good news is if you do a great job, you're staying, you're here. If it's not a good fit, we're gonna end in part ways, right? Now day four, so this Thursday, I'm gonna go over all of this in detail because there is so much in the 90 day process. It's such an important topic that I really wanted to pull something out of here and go deeper. And I'm going to do that on day four. Okay. But here's what I want you to know right now is number one, if you're not ready to train this new person or your manager that might be training that person doesn't have time, we have a big, big problem. Okay. A new person needs handholding. A new person needs like your support and your training and just your time. And so many people are like, oh, I'm too busy to hire. I'm too, bu- I'm too busy to train. I need somebody who just knows what they're doing. Even if you hire somebody that knows what they're doing, they don't know your business. They are not the visionary of your business. You are going to need to step in and give them a little bit of love, okay? So I want to make sure that you understand you've gotta have time after you hire them to be present with them, okay? now. If you didn't get clear, step number one, right? Clear and confident. If you didn't get clear and confident and understand like what would their daily routines look like? What would their weekly tasks look like? What are some projects I'm gonna have them start doing right away? If you don't do that, okay, here's what happens. You're letting them start slow, okay? You're looking unorganized, okay? They have nothing to do. And here's the thing, a high performer, hates doing nothing. A high performer is like, I'm not producing anything and they're going to see this and they're not going to keep hiring me. So the person you want is going to hate it. They're going to hate starting slow and they're going to hate that you look unorganized and that you're not giving them any time. Here's the worst one of those two. Okay. I don't even know which one's worse because they're both really bad. The second one is you get an underperformer. Okay. Who's excited that you don't have time for them and they're okay with not doing anything all day because they're thinking it's your fault and now you've set the tone for the underperformer to basically just cruise in this business they are not going to work harder three months in than they are the first three months in the business okay you want to make sure you set the tone you like get out and you get running right right away from the get-go you've got to start strong those first 90 days okay does that make sense tell me in the chat if you're still with me the first 90 days People are like, oh, don't teach onboarding. No one's gonna care about onboarding. I'm like, onboarding is hiring. Onboarding is figuring out, is he or she a good fit or not? You are still hiring those first 90 days, okay? This is why I did not put onboarding in a totally separate framework. I put it in the fifth and final stage of hiring, okay? It goes together. Now, during this 90 days, you have the time to connect the person that you just hired with the company vision. And it's really for you to decide, does this make sense? If your biggest thing, like for us, integrity is a really big value. Okay, what does integrity mean? It means doing what you say you're gonna do. Like if you say, you'll get that to me on Tuesday, then I'm expecting you to get it to me on Tuesday or earlier. If you get it to me Wednesday morning, we have a problem because now I can't trust you. Your word doesn't mean anything if you're constantly breaking what's happening. So we need, that's why the sample project is so great to test it out first, right? but you can fake a pretty good five hour, 10 hour sample project. You can look amazing for five to 10 hours, but then all of a sudden you get in and they can't sustain it for 40 hours a week or whatever you hire them for, okay? So this time you wanna make sure that you're connecting them with the company vision and you're really assessing are our core values there, okay? This is a make or break time for them. You need to pour into them so much during that time Because in 90 days, you wanna be able to really judge the situation, okay? I have done this before and it's a waste of time and money. I have hired somebody, not given them the time and energy they should have gotten. Maybe they weren't, and here's the thing, they never perform that well when you don't give them time and energy because they don't know what to do to perform well. 
They don't even know what winning looks like. So I've hired somebody and I've not given them the time and energy they deserve. So what happens is in 90 days and I'm looking at them, I can't give an honest grade. It would be like the teacher, right? It would be like a teacher being like, we're gonna have a science test on Friday. She doesn't teach you anything and then she gives you the quiz and then you fail, right? A good teacher would go, but I didn't teach them that. So did they, were they really that bad or was it on me, right? So if you don't pour into them in the first 90 days, how can you honestly state in 90 days if they're a good fit or not, if it's on you, okay? So don't waste that time and energy because what happens is, this is the worst part, is you're blame yourself. You're going to let them stay because it was on you. Whether or not you then give them the time and energy they deserve, what happens is, what if they're bad? What if you gave them an additional 90 days and you're like, okay, I'm going to pour into them now. If they're not good, you just wasted three months of that person's salary testing it out when you could have just tested it out the first 90 days, okay? So if you're a bad leader and you're not leading at all, it's going to be really, really hard for you to see, does this make sense, okay? Um, or I should say, is he or she a good fit?